upon the Lord on behalf of the flock, on behalf of the region. It's just exciting how the Holy Spirit's leading in the secret place. Go with me to Genesis 35. Genesis 35, beginning at verse 9. Now that Jacob had returned from Padam Aram, God appeared to him again at Bethel. God appeared to him again at Bethel. God blessed him, saying, Your name is Jacob, but you will not be called Jacob any longer. From now on, your name will be Israel. So God renamed him Israel. I just love the beauty of verse 11. Then God said, I am El Shaddai. God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. You will become a great nation, even many nations. Kings will be among your descendants. And I will give you the land I once gave to Abraham and Isaac. Yes, I will give it to you and your descendants after you. Then God went up from the place where he had spoken to Jacob. Father, we thank you for the beautiful word tonight. We thank you, Father, the most precious thing that's ever been before us, your word. Father, lead us tonight. Holy Spirit, teach us tonight. We pray that your word would go forth. It would call to hearts, Lord, and it would send us to where you are. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As I was getting before the Lord this week, and as I went Monday, uh, began to just let the Holy Spirit lead me in the secret place. I went into a place of intercession, a place of deep intercession over the region and the call and just begin to intercede as the Holy Spirit was putting His Word in my heart and just rolling it in the atmosphere. And in the moment of that, I heard the Holy Spirit speak this, the secret of your open. The secret of your open. The secret of your open. That's what I want to share with you tonight for just a few minutes. Go with me to Genesis. Back to Genesis 25. Let's get to the beginning of this man, Jacob. And let's teach for a few minutes tonight. Isaac pleaded with the Lord on behalf of his wife because he was unable to have chips because she was unable to have children. The Lord answered Isaac's prayer and Rebecca became pregnant with twins, but the two children struggled with each other in her womb. So she went to ask the Lord about it. Why is this happening to me? She asked, and the Lord told her, the sons in your womb will become two nations. From the very beginning, the two nations will be rivals. One nation will be stronger than the other, and your older son will serve your younger son. The word of the Lord is the foundation of your destination. Amen? Hallelujah. The word of the Lord has been spoken over this one Jacob, and it's been spoken that you will become a nation, and the older will actually serve the younger. There's a God-ordained destiny, no different for you and I. Psalm 139, verse 13 through 16. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. There's a God-ordained destiny not only for Jacob, but for you. Amen? Hallelujah. This is, this is just the foundational understanding and teaching of God's Word. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. He saw you before you was born. Every day of your life is recorded. Amen. Amen. You have a God or ordained destiny. Look with me here at Genesis 28, 10 through 15. And we'll look on a little bit further as well. Meanwhile, Jacob left Beersheba. And traveled toward Haran. And you know the story. That, that he bargained for birthright. That he schemed for blessing. We got a lot of that going on right now. Bargaining for birthright and scheming for blessing. But you know he got, he, he learned some things from mama, didn't he? 
We've talked about this before. It's nothing new. It's kind of review, but, but God is calling in this word tonight, and we'll get there. To, but we've got to see some foundation laid. But you know that He bargained for birthright, that He schemed for blessing, and He's got Himself on the run. And here we go with an encountered covenant in Genesis 28. Meanwhile, Jacob left Beersheba and traveled toward Haran. At sundown, he arrived, he arrived at a good place to set up camp and stopped there for the night. Jacob found a stone to rest his head against and lay down to sleep. As he slept, he dreamed of a stairway that reached from the earth up to heaven and he saw the angels of God going up and down the stairway at the top of the stairway stood the Lord and he said I'm the Lord the God of your grandfather Abraham the God of your father Isaac the grounds you are lying on belongs to you amen I'm giving it to you and your descendants your descendants will be as numerous as the dust of the earth they will spread out in all directions to the west and the east to the north and the south and all the families of the earth will be blessed through you and your descendants what's more i am with you and i will protect you wherever you go one day i will bring you back to this land i will not leave you until i have finished giving you everything i have promised you aren't you glad that one day in your running of a pathway that god came and you encountered the the presence of God and he also encountered with you and gave you a covenant through his name Jesus Christ hallelujah amen encounter covenant when the Holy Spirit drew us and we gave our lives and went into covenant through the shed blood of Jesus Christ washed and made whole new amen verse 16 then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said surely the Lord is in this place and I wasn't even aware of it but he was also afraid and said what an awesome place this is it is none other than the house of God the very gateway to heaven the next morning, Jacob got up early. He took the stone. He rested his head against and set it upright as a memorial pillar. Then he poured olive oil over it. He named the place Bethel, which means house of God, although it was previously called Luz. Then Jacob made this vow. He encountered God. God called to him as he called to his grandfather, as he called to his father. He encountered God and covenant is made. God is the maker of the covenant. Amen. Then Jacob made a vow and covenant. If God will indeed be with me, and protect me on this journey. And if he will provide me with food and clothing. And if I return safely to my father's home. Then the Lord will certainly be my God. And this memorial pillar I have set up. Will become a place for worshiping God. And I will present to God a tenth of everything he gives me. So you understand that he has a God ordained destiny. That kings will come. as he, His descendants will become kings. Amen. Hallelujah. The land that he's laying on will become his. Amen. Through the grace of the Lord. Through the calling of the Lord. And so we see that he, is, he has a God ordained destiny. But yet he's, he's, he's bargaining and scheming to get to this, to this, this destiny if you will. And he's on the run here and he encounters God in a wonderful covenant. Amen? Is everybody good? Amen. All right, then we get to Genesis 31. <laughs> but Jacob soon learned that Laban's sons were grumbling about him. Jacob has robbed our father of everything, they said. He has gained all this wealth at our father's expense. And Jacob began to notice a change in Laban's attitude toward him. Jacob was blessed, wasn't he? He was walking in covenant with the Lord, but yet he's still a schemer. He still kind of did things in, in his own way, but he has a covenant blessing of God. Everything he, you know, he gets involved in, God begins to bless it. Amen. He's in, he's walking in the covenant that the Lord has placed on his life. We get here in Genesis 31. But Jacob soon learned that Laban's sons were grumbling about him. Jacob has robbed our father of everything, they said. He has gained all his wealth at our father's expense. And Jacob began to notice a change in Laban's attitude toward him. Then the Lord said to Jacob, this is key. He said, return to the land of your father and grandfather and to your relatives there and I will be with you. So what is the secret of Jacob's open existence as he even dwells 20 years, approximately 20 years right here with Laban. What is the secret? 
It was the moment of the encounter covenant in the face to face. Amen. That's the secret to his open. It's the secret to his open existence. And here's what happens to us. We also have this encounter with God. And he gives us a covenant of redemption and becoming a new creature. And we get excited. And we pursue the Lord. And we stay before the Lord. And we stay at his feet. And we walk in an open victory. And we walk in open blessing. Amen. Why? Because we are with the Lord. We are before the Lord. Amen. But then we begin on the journey a little bit and we begin to encounter life and we begin to encounter things and, 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 we, and we love the Lord and we acknowledge God, but yet we do our own thing. You see, Jacob acknowledges God. Well, at least when, 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 uh, when, when Rachel's kicking up a fuss, he says, look, because you don't have any kids, it's not my fault, that's up to God. He's acknowledging God all along the way. But the joker is kind of doing his own thing to try to, come on somebody now, to try to see something manifest in the open. Uh, you see, acknowledging God yet doing your own thing. But look right here in Genesis 31. This is very interesting. The Lord's calling Jacob to return to the land. He's, you know what he's essentially saying? Return. To the secret place. Return to the secret because the secret place is the secret of your open. <laughs> and it's not even a secret. Come on, man. Come on, amen. But you know what I'm saying? You see, we get in these walks and we, you know, trying to see the destiny of our lives come to pass according to God's call to our lives. And we acknowledge God and we allow Him to be close in the journey, but yet we do our own thing. But look at this. Look how gracious and loving our God is. So Jacob called Rachel and Leah out of the field where he was watching his flock. He said to them, I have noticed that your father's attitude toward me has changed. But the God of my father has been with me. You know how... How hard I have worked for your father, but he has cheated me, changing my wages ten times. I want you to notice the word of the Lord here, but it says, But God has not allowed him to do me any harm. That's the graciousness. That's the grace of God. That's the mercy of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you get out here, and you know, and a lot of the churches in this way, we get out here and we and we know that, that we're calling this great commission, and we know that there's a destination and, and there's a destiny for, for our generation, and, and, and we want to see it manifest. But when we get out here and we say, God, you can come along, but this is how we're gonna do it. Mm, come on. Even in that, I'm gonna tell you right now, even in that. I'm speaking of the Holy Spirit now. He listen to me now. Even in that, He has not allowed you to be harmed. Amen. Come on. But you need to understand this and how important this word of the Lord is tonight. It has cost you time. Amen. How long was He there? I worked seven years and, and, and then He gets bamboozled, right? <laughs> I work another. Why? Because he's doing his own thing. He's acknowledging God, but he's 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 doing his own thing, right? It even declares that God has not allowed him to do me any harm. And you need to understand tonight, yeah, it has cost time. What does he say? He says in verse 3, then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your father and grandfather to your relatives there, and I will be with you. All right, let's go there. Genesis 32. This left Jacob all alone in the camp, and a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. When the man saw you, you know the story. And this is something you need to understand, too. Because one of his wives took some idols of their father's house with him. You see, God, oh my God, I feel the hoser. God will not tell you to return. <laughs> Come on. Of a place that you need to get out of, come on, without doing some cutting away of the things that you picked up in the place that you've been. Amen. Amen. Think about that now. 
lady comes looking for stuff that's been stolen from his house. Nearly costs one of their lives, didn't it? Hey, you could kill him. We didn't steal nothing from you. You could kill him. You know? That's key. That's key right there. Because in a moment, he's going to say, return again. And you're going to see what they do with the idols this time. They bury them. <laughs> Amen? I'll cut him away. Come on. It's key. Genesis 32. Let's get here. He's, you know, he's doing the labor thing. Acknowledging God. It's cost him some time. Amen? But God's gracious. He's not harmed. Amen? He says, get up out of here. So he gets up and he goes. This left Jacob all alone in the camp and a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. You know, they, they, they get things right with Laban. You know, he's going to face Esau, all this stuff. He, he separates the camp, sends gifts, trying to do everything. He's still doing his thing, man. You know? When the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of his socket. Then the man said, let me go for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? The man asked. He replied, Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob. The man told him, from now on you will be called Israel. Jacob's a tough, he's a tough one. He is. You ever wonder why God has to name it twice? <laughs> Come on. He says, from now on you will be called Israel because you have fought with God with men and one. Please tell me your name, Jacob asked. Why do you want to know my name? The man replied. Then he blessed Jacob there. Jacob named the place Penuel, which means face of God, for he said, I have seen God face to face. Yet my life has been spared. The sun was rising at Jacob, as Jacob left Penuel, and he was limping because of the injury to his hip. Even today, the people of Israel don't either tend or near the hip socket because of what happened that night when the man strained the tendon of Jacob's hip. What does he say when he's Doing his own thing, acknowledging God, wasting time. God says, get up, return. Return to the secret of your existence. Return to the secret of your open. Come on. Return. He says, return to the land. And what happens when he returns? He gets back to the secret of his very existence, the face-to-face -face meeting. Would to God that the church of God would get back to just a face-to-face -face meeting. Hallelujah. Amen. A face-to-face -face meeting. It says return. The face-to-face -face meeting is the secret of your open. Listen, you, you need to hear the word of the Lord tonight. You really need to hear the word of the Lord tonight. If there's ever a moment that you need to ramp it up in the secret place, face to face with God and Him and His Word alone, it's now. It's now. Come on. It's now. He said, well, I'm doing all right. I acknowledge God and everything's going all right. And Listen to me now. God sent me this night. To remind you, maybe you're, you're running 100 miles an hour in a secret place. Praise God. Keep going. Amen? Maybe you haven't been in it in a while. Return. I'm going to tell you, this call exists. Because of the face-to-face -face meeting. That's how it was birthed. That's why it exists. That's why it continues to be blessed. Amen? Come on. That's your life. That's who you are. Come on, that's who you are. It's the face-to-face -face meeting. You can't get, you can't lose. You can't miss out. You can't, I don't, Monday night I was tired. But you gotta get there. Come on. You gotta get there. It's not a, it's not, a, it's not a discipline. It's my lifeline. It's my very existence. Come on, somebody. It's what's going to keep Tuesday in line. I can, tell when, so I can tell when people get their identity out of whack and when they get their hands involved in stuff and when they, and when they just get all, you know what's lacking? True face-to-face -face meaning. I can tell, I can, I can, you have been around it for a while now. Come on, amen. But man, you ain't been in the secret place in a while, have you? My marriage doesn't work right if I'm not in the secret place. Come on. Hello. If you're not, come on. When I, amen. 
I don't know how to raise Noel if I'm not in the secret. Amen. Come on. It is my very, it's the secret to my open. Amen. It's the secret to my open. It's the secret to your open. It's the secret to, to what did Jesus do? He's done. Amen. He slipped off to a quiet place. He went up to a mountain. He went somewhere by himself. He, come on somebody. And he walked in the will of the Father. What was the secret to Jesus' open? <laughs> it was the secret place. It was a face-to-face -face meeting with the Father. Amen. So he tells them to return. They make a mistake and somebody about dies because they take some of the stuff that they picked up from the place that they spent too long in. Amen. So the Lord renews and says, look, man, <laughs> we don't make covenant here once. He comes back and gives them the name and the secret face to face meeting in the secret place. You know, everything gets right with his brother, and they move on to Shechem. You remember? And he buys buys a, a piece of land there. And here we go, Genesis 34. Let's look a little bit further. Because their sister Dinah had been defiled, Jacob's sons replied deceitfully as they spoke to Shechem and his father Hamel. You know that Dinah had been raped. You remember the story? And then they, and Shechem, he wanted her for his wife. Because their sister Dinah had been defiled, Jacob's sons replied deceitfully. They were aggravated. As they spoke to Shechem and his father Hamar, they said to him, we can't do such a thing. We can't give our sister to a man who is not circumcised. That would be a disgrace to us. We will enter into an agreement with you on one condition only, that you become like us by circumcising all your males. Then we will give you our daughters and take your daughters for ourselves. We'll settle among you and become one people with you. What's, what are they doing? And daddy's just letting it go on. The same old junk that they learned from grandma, that they've seen daddy do for 20 years, the same old thing here. Here we go again. It's not that they don't acknowledge God, but yet too still thinking that they know better. Come out of face-to-face -face meeting, right? Come on. Woo! A continued acknowledgement of God, yet too still thinking you know better. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a tight word tonight. He says, then we'll give you your daughters and take your daughters for ourselves and We'll settle among you and become one people with you. But if you will not agree to be circumcised, we'll take our sister and go. That would have been about the best thing, wouldn't it? But this plan right here. They just come up with it again. Doing their own thing. How many encounters are you going to have to have with the Holy Spirit before you figure out it's time to quit doing your own thing? Come on. The continued acknowledgement, yet still thinking you know better than he knows. Come on. What does he say? What's the result of it? What's the result of it? 35. Then God said to Jacob, Go up to Bethel and settle there and build an altar there to God who appeared to you when you were fleeing from your brother Esau. So Jacob said, God, they got a covenant, man. They got descendants, numerous, that God has promised, amen? Numerous, says, kings will come from you. You don't have to make some covenant with Shechem to try to produce something. Come on. Jacob knew better. Come on. Jacob knew better. Israel knew better. Amen? But once again, he lets his boys start scheming just like his grandma, just like him. Just like their grandma, just like their dad. Come on. 
And we go to verse 35. And God says, here we go. Let's go back again. <laughs> right? Again return. What's the secret to his open existence? The face-to-face -face meeting. Not his way. Not what he can think of how to bring something about. Amen? Not some sort of scheme or formula or something like that. No. Come on. The secret to your open is before the Lord and His Word. Come on. You got a listen to me. You got a genuine heart before the Lord. I'm gonna speak this tonight. You got a, a true heart that just wants to know God's way and His Word. You can take that book and you can get in a secret place and you let the Holy Ghost teach you. Come on, somebody. Now, if you're trying to do something to twist up God's word to create something, then that's what, you know, you're going to get you're going to yourself in a mess right there. But you don't have to have a PhD, and you don't have to have a, a library full of a commentary set. You don't have to have 15 different YouTube preachers saying 40 different things. What you need is a face of my God, listen to me now. What we the secret to our open existence is the face-to-face -face meeting. That's it. What did Abraham have? <laughs> Get up and go to a land that I will show you. My God. Come on. I feel the Holy Ghost in this one. What did the Apostle Paul have? Who are you, Lord? And what would you have me to do? He had a face-to-face -face meeting. Paul, go here. Paul, don't go here. My God. It's, your, it's the secret to the open existence of your life. And it's the only way for authentic destiny of your calling to manifest. Then God said to Jacob, they still scheme it in Genesis 34. And he says, get up, go up to Bethel and settle there. And build an altar there to God who appeared to you when you were fleeing from your brother Esau. So Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, get his, this is key. God got somebody killed the first time. And God was gracious, was he not? He said, get rid of the foreign gods you have with you and purify yourselves and change your clothes. Somebody, come on, we need to hear the word of the Lord tonight as a people. Then come, let us go up to Bethel. This is key. Get rid of the foreign gods. Then come let us go up to Bethel where I will build an altar to God who answered me. See, he's always waiting there in the face-to-face -face meeting. Aren't you glad? Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He's always waiting there. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods they had and the rings in their ears. And Jacob, hallelujah, amen. This is what, come on. The things that you... Mm, we pick up things, don't we? In areas that we don't belong. Come on. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods they had and the rings in their ears and Jacob buried them under the oak at Shechem. Buried them. Hallelujah. Then they set out and the terror of God fell on the towns all around them so that no one pursued them. What is the beauty of it? God gives them another return. Come on, listen now. Jacob gets out of whack with Laban, does he not? His identity gets messed up. He says, return. Face-to-face -face meeting is the secret of your open. Jacob gets over here outside of Shechem and his boys and everybody gets in trouble and they get out of whack again. And what does he say? Return. Somebody needs to hear the word of the Lord tonight. Return purely to face to face meeting. Return. Return. He says again, return. And thou love the grace and the love of the Lord as they set out to return once again. They were not harmed. Hallelujah. You love to see them. He says, I, he, kept, he kept him from harming me. He kept the people. Man, they went in and plundered Shechem. They went in and killed the men, took the wives and children, took everything, and walked out. And yeah, they, some people probably got caught wind of that and said, we're going to get there. But God, even, don't you love the 
the grace and mercy of the Lord. Somebody needs to give God a shout of praise because that was once you, that was once me. It might be us right now, but I'm telling you right now, you have not been harmed. And on your way back, you will not. Opt. I speak, hallelujah, whoever needs to hear this tonight, here or throughout where this video reaches. I speak right now if you get up and return to the secret of your hope. It's a face-to-face -face meeting. You can get up from where you are right now and walk back to the house of the Lord in that meeting place and nothing will harm you on your way. Hallelujah. 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 He didn't write this for a good story. He wrote it for us to apply it to our lives. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 6. Jacob and all the people with him came to Luz, that is Bethel, the land of Canaan. There he built an altar. And he called the place El Bethel because it was there that God revealed himself to him when he was fleeing from his brother. And now Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, died and was buried on the oak outside Bethel. So it was named Alam Bakuth. After Jacob returned from Padam, Padam Aram, God appeared to him again and blessed him. God said to him, your name is Jacob. Aren't you glad that God? And he says, you will no longer be called Jacob. Your name will be Israel. So aren't you, aren't you glad for the grace of God? Hallelujah. So he, he called him Israel again. Amen. Hallelujah. And God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and increase in number. A nation and a community of nations will come from you. And kings will be among your descendants. The land I gave to Abraham and Isaac I also give to you. And I will give this land to your descendants after you. Then God went up from, that, from him at that place where he had talked with him. Jacob set up a pillar at the place where God had talked with him and he poured out a drink offering on it. He also poured oil on it and Jacob called the place where God talked with him, Bethel. Matthew 6 says, But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. The secret of your open is the face-to-face -face meeting in the secret place. Nothing's changed. The very existence of this call today is simply that. Amen? It's the secret of your open. What's your secret place? What's your meetings look like? Come on. You need to hear the word of the Lord tonight. Somebody needs to hear this. Come on. He's, he's serious tonight. He ain't playing. Heed to the word of the Lord tonight. Isaiah 12, 1 through 5. The people of Israel feed on the wind. They chase after the east wind all day long. They pile up lies and violence. They are making an alliance with Assyria while sending olive oil to buy support from Egypt. Now the Lord is bringing charges against Judah. Hear the word of the Lord. He is about to punish Jacob for all his deceitful ways and pay him back for all he has done, even in the womb. Jacob struggled with his brother when he became a man. He even fought with God. Yes, he wrestled with the angel and won. He wept and pleaded for a blessing from him. There at Bethel he met God face to face and God spoke to him. The Lord God of heaven's armies, the Lord is His name. Listen. So now come back to your God. Act with love and justice and always depend on Him. The Word of the Lord is going forth tonight and we all are responsible for what He is saying. He's saying return to a face-to-face -face meeting. It is the secret of your open. It has always been the secret of your existence. The things that you have picked up doing your own thing, bury them. Don't carry them with you to another account. Bury them. Hallelujah. Come on. I'm telling you, there's, there's been some alignment that's not... Come on. Bury it. Bury it. Bury it. Zechariah 1. 
Therefore say to the people, this is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of Heaven's army. Don't be like your ancestors who would not listen or pay attention when the earlier prophets said to them, this is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Turn from your evil ways and stop all your evil practices. The word of the Lord has been spoken in this place tonight. The secret of your open is the face-to-face -face meeting. Come on. The secret of our open is the face-to-face -face meeting. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word tonight. Father, you're calling for a people. come out of religion to come out of culture to come out of tradition to come out of misalignment you're calling people this night to put away the things that we've picked up and finally bury them you're calling people back to the very existence the very open of their walk the only way that the calling of their lives will openly manifest in the earth is by the face-to-face -face meeting. It's the secret. The secret place is what birthed them. The secret place called them. The secret place strengthened them. The secret place has always led them. Father, may we return. May we return. Father, you're calling for us to turn and return to you. Holy Spirit, have your way in every heart of this place tonight. Father, may every heart heed your word. May we return to the beginning of the promise. Father, help us to understand that our very existence is found in the face-to-face -face meeting. We thank you tonight. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen hearts in this place. Pray that you would encourage hearts to tune out all the noise and bury all the things. And once again, cry before you. Father, let it be. Let this word plant Holy Spirit water and grow it. And may we as a people of God, your church, Father, may we heed to the word of the Lord tonight. Yes, get in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Remember how the Lord leads you as we dismiss tonight. If you want to bow where you are, you want to get an altar. If you need to go, I understand midweek. Remember how the Lord leads you tonight. Just take a moment with Him before you go. You know what you need to say. You know what you need to do. Amen. Just be led of the Holy Spirit in this place. I pray a blessing over you. Father, pray that you would protect your people. Lord, ordain their steps and guide, protect, provide your mighty favor upon them. Lord, may they walk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By your voice alone, no tempting you and worshiping you alone. Father, that is the passing of the wilderness to walk in the calling of our lives. We love you and we honor you. We thank you for your words tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God loves you. We love you too. We'll see you next time.